Hi, my name's Cheese, and welcome to the first Bone Sweeper Progress update video. If you'd like to check out last year's prototype, you can find a link below. And if you're super keen to try the stuff talked about here, I make test builds available to my supporters on Patreon. For anybody who hasn't heard of the project before, the primary gameplay is inspired by Minesweeper, but instead of locating explosives, you're hunting for fossils. Between digs, excavated fossils can be assembled into skeletons, and when completed, those skeletons can then be placed in your museum. Dig sites are selected from a world map, which can be adjusted to show the Earth's layout across the Mesozoic era via Time Slider. You can leave a dig halfway through and come back later, and you can keep playing after smashing a fossil if you want to. So starting a hard or large dig isn't a commitment to playing the whole thing perfectly in one sitting. I've been working on a bigger version of Bone Sweeper for about 6 or 7 months now, and I have the dig, assembly, and map phases all playable, albeit mostly with placeholder assets. I have temporary stand-ins for the museum phase and practice modes, as well as initial back-ends for avatar customization, dig abilities, and a few other systems. There's a new puzzle mode for the assembly phase, and a few new gameplay options that weren't present in last year's playable prototype. Like the prototype, this version is entirely playable using text-to-speech instead of visuals, with the exception of the temporary museum. Over the past month or so, I've been primarily working on cosmetic changes and small improvements. The dig phase now has a surrounding environment and isn't just a box full of dirt in the void anymore. The ground geometry is generated at runtime using Godot's surface tool helper. The ground height is based on the same noise texture that gives the dig tiles their variation, but it's amplified based on distance from the center of the dig site to help give more of an impression of distance. To help make things feel less plain, I've used Godot's multi-mesh class to scatter doodads around. Eventually this will include trees, shrubs, grasses, and stuff like that, but for now it's just a couple of rocks that I made during the weekly 3D modeling practice sessions that I've been running lately. I've also added some additional environment textures, which give different ground and sediment colors, and provide some fun variation in mood and setting. These are temporary for now, but it'll help make different regions feel a little bit more distinct when there's more than just Australia in the game. I finally found time to implement the adjacent number highlighting behavior from the prototype. Since numbers aren't meshes and color is handled differently in this version, it's a bit more fiddly to implement. After overlooking something obvious for far longer than I care to admit, uh, I finally got it under control and also added a setting to allow it to be toggled. Building on the experience that I gained using the multi-mesh class for the dig environment doodads, I decided to rework the assembly phase background to use them too. After doing that, I extended the background to have a few more shelves, and so far it doesn't seem to have had a negative performance impact. The assembly phase now automatically ends when no fossils can be placed. This doesn't really matter when assembling with the puzzle mode, but Using action mode, it was easy to place everything valid and then waste a bunch of time cycling through the leftover fossils before realizing that you have to leave. It's nice to have that friction point addressed for now. I spent some time modeling up and implementing a background for the map phase based on a mock-up that I created at the beginning of the year. It's not quite finished yet, but it's already making the map phase feel much more complete. I've left a bunch of spaces with empties in them. These get converted over to Godot's spatial nodes on import. And I'm thinking of adding some mementos to uh, these slots as you progress through the game. I've also given the globe itself some attention. From the beginning, I'd always planned to make something that had more of a parchment map feel than a realistic view of the Earth. Eventually, I'll end up adding some textures to help sell that better, but for now, the changes in colors are more indicative of the direction I'm taking it in, and I'm feeling happier with the presentation overall. When I first added the globe at the beginning of the year, I bumbled my way through writing a shader to draw lines of longitude. It was very, very crude, but it was enough to make it easier to see how the time slider affects the landmass. In the meantime, I'd taken a few swings at trying to make something that more accurately showed lines of longitude and latitude, but it was always out of reach. As I've talked about before, I have a tiny, tiny, tiny maths brain. Yesterday morning, I gave up, and while I was modeling some latitude and longitude lines as 3D geometry, I had a maybe this is simpler than I'm making it moment. And by the end of the evening, I had what we see here. I feel like I've ascended to a new level of mathematical consciousness. Last but not least, I've been working on some experiments that explore the ins and outs of something that I've got in mind for museum room editing. Not the placement of skeletons and fixtures, but the shape of the room itself. I'm drawing some loose inspiration from the in-game level editor in Portal 2, 
and exposing a simplified voxel representation for the ease of editing that a more complex mesh can be generated from once you're happy. The high level concept that I'm aiming for is that I'd like players to be able to just walk their avatars up to a wall and push it or pull it to reshape the room. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to pull off what I have in mind, and I'm comfortable falling back to a set of pre-made room shapes so that this doesn't gobble up too much of development time, but if it comes together smoothly and doesn't blow out my schedule, this is a feature I'd really like to have. A very big thank you to the Patreon supporters going by on screen at the moment. Their support has helped me eat while making this game, and I am so appreciative. A uh, huge thanks also to Screen Tasmania, who supported this project with a small grant at the end of last year. If you'd like to know more about that, there are some links in the description where I talk about and break down my grant application. Until recently, I was the only person working on Bone Sweeper. To help free me up to work on other aspects of the game, I've brought Peter Silk on board as a composer. I've really enjoyed working with him in the past on the soundtracks for Hive Time, Bat Egg, and Supply Chain, and I can't wait to see where Bone Sweeper takes us. Background music that we've been hearing in this video is an early concept for the map phase, and I love it to pieces. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're keen to keep track of development, you can find some links in the description. Thanks for watching, and bye!